Hi, it's me, Good Times with Gabe. Today I am interviewing Wendy Stewart Kaplan. Thank you for coming today, Wendy. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, Gabe. Thank you for inviting me on your show. I'm very excited. Believe me, I'm the one who has the honor. <laughs> now, you've done a lot of things with yeah. your career. Yes. Now, I want to ask you, why did you start hosting? So I started hosting because in my career, I started out modeling. And when I started meeting people, I realized I really enjoyed talking to them. And then I realized whenever I went to a party, I would, before I went to the party, Gabe, I would get like People Magazine or one of the gossip magazines because I always thought, well, if I meet strangers, right, what are you going to talk to them about? So I would have him in my head, I'd read all this gossip and stuff. And then I'd get to the party and I would just start talking to random people. And I learned that I really enjoyed doing that because I would start with, you know, the gossip that I had read, but then I would move on to more personal stuff because they enjoyed talking to me. And I, I'm a curious person. I loved hearing about them. So yeah, the, you know, the, the rest is history. The, the best thing that you can say hosting, you get to meet people from everywhere, right? And especially now during the pandemic, you know, when we're all virtual, I can talk to, so I can be a guest on someone's show or I can be a host anywhere in the, in the world. And it's such a fantastic way to find out about people. I think to host, you really have to like people, don't you? Mm -hmm. 100% agree with that. Now, the kind of career you have is not easy. What kind of hardships have you had to overcome to stay yeah. where you are? Oh, th that's a very good question. So um, when I started out modeling, Gabe, I was turned down by every single model agency because I wasn't really fitting for what they wanted, right? And it's kind of like acting too. There's like loads of rejection. So the hardest thing starting out and the hardest thing to learn to deal with is everyone telling you that, no, I'm sorry, no, you're not right. Because you start to take it really personal. Like even if you audition for something that you think you might be fantastic for, people will be judging you and they might not agree. Now you can either take that to heart or in my case, I thought to myself, well, they're just wrong. And I have to just keep keep going because I believe I can do this. And I believed I could get modeling and I believed I could start working as an actress. And I've carried that through my entire life. I make films because what we need to learn about the world, and I'm a lot older than you, but I, you're so smart. I think you know this already. These are the world is made up of people's opinions. So it really doesn't say who we are and it doesn't describe the value of what we can do. As people, Gabe, we got to believe in ourselves. Isn't that the truth? That is 100% the truth. And I know how you feel. Um, I did the school play this year and I'm stuck in the ensemble. I'm not a player. I'm not a lead. I'm just in the ensemble. I'm like, they're just wrong. They'll yeah. see. I give, I completely agree with you. And you know what, see at your age, I didn't know that. And my, my mother said to me, the whole world can't be wrong and you're right. Well, that turned out to be, to be wrong. And I, I too, I can remember when I had acting things and I was stuck as an extra and I would think, oh my gosh, how could they have made such a terrible mistake? But if you're smart in life, you use all of that to make you go forward and to go after the things that you want. You know, you learn how to deal with rejection. And even if you're not in the modeling or acting world, I think all of us have to deal with rejection. The sooner you learn how to, how to take it in and say, hey, I'm a really great person, the better it'll be. 100%. Now, how has your life changed during COVID career-wise? Oh my goodness. My life has done 365 degree change during COVID. Like right up until COVID, I, I was doing theatrical performances. 
I would do modeling jobs. I was emceeing and hosting at clubs. And then COVID happened. And that was in New York City, they shut us down on March 12th. And, you know, if, if you remember, Gabe, when this all happened in the beginning, none of us really knew what it was. They told us about this virus, but you know, I, you and I, what did we think what a virus was, right? When you get a virus, you know, flu virus lasts a couple of days, a stomach virus is 36 hours. So we really didn't know what it meant. And, you know, they were shutting things all over the place. And, and I thought to myself, well, you know, they just want to make sure people are safe. Well, little did any of us know that we would be here tonight, the end of January, it's still going on and all of our lives have changed. So when March 12th happened, they shut New York down. And I thought to myself, everything that I do has now stopped. It was terrible for performers. And it's still very hard for per performers because a lot of my friends who had regular jobs, they could just go and start to work from home. My, my daughter works from home, but everything I do is out there. So I thought, what am I going to do? And I was standing in the kitchen with my husband and we were talking about this whole pandemic. And I said, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I looked at him, I said, wait, I was standing in my kitchen cave. I thought, I'll start a cooking show. And he looked at me and he said, but Wendy, you don't cook. And I thought, exactly. What could be better? Because I'm a comedian, right? So what could be better than somebody that really doesn't know how to cook, learning how to cook? And that's how Pandemic Cooking with Wendy came about. And it also helped that, you know, my husband does all the cinematography on our documentaries so we can work together. And Gabe, guess what? I've learned to cook. We've got 97 episodes up. They're all short, but I make all kinds of different food from all over the world. And one of the best ones, one of the best things, I know you love acting. I get their costumes and uh, wigs, and I can do characters on my own better. Well, that's a perfect idea. Now, um, let's see here. Was there any moment that propelled your career into its highest point? Well, well, when you have a career, you have a high, high point, high point, and, and, and career, career. you're not one of the highest, one of the highest in Africa to make films. Going to Africa to me was absolutely everything from, I'm, I'm sure this is something I know you can relate to, right? When we're really little, we all have incredible things we think we're going to do. But in yeah. life, a lot of the times we never get to do them. You know, when we're growing up, so we think about that thing we wanted to do. But I can honestly say, like, from the time I was five, there were two things I wanted to do was model and go to Africa. I don't, I can't even tell you, Gabe, what the connection is because I don't know with Africa, but one of the coolest things I got to do, we made a documentary, my husband and I, we went to Cameroon in West Africa to do a documentary called Whispers and Witnesses, Primate Rescue in Cameroon. And it was about what's happening with the poachers and how they were killing the gorillas and chimpanzees. And I thought that was a really important story to tell. This, I'm sure you, you know, you know about, everyone knows about elephants and rhinoceros and what's happening in different parts of Africa. But a lot of people don't know that they're killing gorillas and chimpanzees. And the reason they're doing that is in certain parts of the world, they believe that those parts of primates can be used to cure things or make you feel better, or they could have even religious, they can be used in religious ceremonies. So I met two women in New York that were starting these rescue centers in Africa to help take care <laughs> of the gorillas and chimpanzees. And I thought, I want to make a film about them. And when I met them, I told them I was going to come there a few months later to do a film about them. And guess what, Gabe? They looked at me like I had a horn coming out of the middle of my head. 
they said, you know, it's very difficult to get to Cameroon and, and the governments are not always so easy to let people in or out. And um, it's not what you think it is. We don't, you know, we don't have a lot of the things that you have in the United States. But guess what? I knew that I just wanted to do that film. And literally two months later, I cashed in my frequent flyer miles. I emailed both of them and said, I'm coming over Christmas for 10 days. And I want to go to your uh, chimpanzee and gorilla rescue centers and meet the animals that you're saving and do a film about it. And that's exactly what I did. And what made it such an incredible high point was a lot of people said to me, that is the most insane thing that I've ever heard. And I thought, that's right. And I'm going to just go ahead and do it because in my heart, I need to tell these stories. I know you get it. 100% Now, now, we had, had a teacher, teacher show. show. If, if Bill's walls are hot, what is the premise of what is the premise of the show? So, 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 um, um, we, uh, started, we uh, started, uh, started, it was called if these walls could talk. My co-host on the show is Tim Moss. He's really great, really great host. Oh, we have a lot of room there, but let's just go for that. And as performers, we all have lots and lots of stories. So I thought it would be a great location to have this, this talk show. And um, we will bring our guests on virtually. This is what we've been doing every week. And we can ask them anything. Because when I host when a I, show, I, host I just like to, it's not gossipy. I just really want to find out like what makes people tick, what what makes them happy, what makes them sad. Like when you meet a great musician, Gabe, right? Don't you say to yourself, like, how did this person this become person. so successful? You want you want to know their whole story. And sometimes the story is not so nice. You know, sometimes the story can be sad. They had parents that they didn't get along with or they they lost a parent. But when you think about it, getting them to talk about how they became such a great success in spite of everything and how that inspires them to perform or write music or or write shows that is really great and that's where that saying if these walls could talk right my mother had a saying gabe she would always say if these walls have, these ears, walls have ears as if the walls could listen to you and and know what you were thinking so yeah that's so, so, that's yeah, where that's it so came from and we're really excited because um, we have so many fun guests planned. We've got this week, we've got Scott Page, who you've interviewed coming on the show. Bring on the show. Bring on the show. Page from Pink Floyd, what, what could be better? I love Pink Floyd. You know, I, I want to know all about Pink Floyd. I think I was your age when Pink Floyd was really popular when when I was growing up. Now, have you listened to their music? A little bit. Yeah. It's very cool, it's right? Very cool. <laughs> Um, we were muted for that little bit there. <laughs> hey, you guys, I don't know why it's doing that. Me neither. I'm muted one time. 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 Okay. Okay. Are we muted okay. again? Are we muted again? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 
Gabe, ask a question. Gabe, ask your next question. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to let you guys as you're going along until it stops because I don't know what it's doing. I don't know what it's doing. This is called technical difficulties. Okay. Technical difficulties. Now, are you working on any new projects? Because you seem to have your hands tied, but have you had time for anything new? Yes, and Gabe, it's very important to have time to have new projects, right? And you must be saying to yourself, well, my gosh, you know, she's working on all these projects. When is there any when time there for anything any else? But as a creative person, so that I continue to grow, I always have to have new things that I'm working on. So one of the things is this, this new show, and I was telling you about it, if these walls could talk, you know, we just started rolling out our, our guests. And this week I have Scott Page on, I've had um, Ian Gurin on, I have had um, Steve Hamm on, I've had Andrew Cole, and I'm, just, I'm having a great time doing that Hi, show. And it's so much fun having Tim Moss there. He's a, a really fun co-host and just a really great person to interview with because Tim and I are very similar in our interview styles. We like to get to the nitty gritty of what the person is. So um, my next project though, which we've already started working on, I know you love dogs, so you're gonna love to hear about my next project. My next project is called Working Dogs, A Love Story. And about a year ago, we started uh, filming stories about working dogs, which are therapy dogs. They can, dogs, they can be dogs in the canine patrol. It's every kind of dog that's working or is a service dog. And uh, we just finished shooting a section of the film called Pandemic Puppies, which was just so much fun. So much fun. <laughs> sure sounds fun. Now... What's pandemic puppies? Pandemic puppies. Pandemic puppies. Pandemic puppies is a part of the film that we added on. We thought we were pretty much done with the film, and then the pandemic started. And I have a really cute little dog named Nugget. Hold on, Nugget. Can someone get me? Oh, there he is. Okay, we're gonna try. Wait, my husband is wrestling Nugget. I'm doing this. I'm doing this for you, Gabe, because he wants you to see Nugget and how adorable he is. So I was taking Nugget out, Nugget for, walks, out for walks in Central Park. In Central and Park, Park and people that had rescue dogs and therapy dogs. And they, they, they had gotten during the pandemic because what dogs can do for us, besides being wonderful companions, when people are hurting emotionally and the pandemic upsets so many people, as it should, they get a dog like a nugget or like your wonderful two dogs and they take them out walking and it gives them a chance to talk to other people. And a lot of people are working from home now. So it was a perfect so way to, to get a dog. So that's the section of the film called pandemic puppies. We interviewed a lot of people, how their dogs are making their life better. Now I'm thinking, cause a lot of people got dogs during COVID, right? But I've been thinking ever since that what's going to happen when everyone goes back to normal, like a lot of people might not be able to fit the needs for their dogs anymore. So that might cause a problem later on. And I definitely think I should get my dog by the end of this video since you brought out yours. Well, first of all, well, I insist that you get your dog, but you know what? The question that you just brought up is a really great one. And it's one that I think about all the time. What is going to happen to these pandemic puppies when things return back to somewhat normal? I can't believe everybody is going to be able to work from home forever. And um, people, because things are changing so drastically, they may have to take job transfers in order to work. And if they have to move, if they move to somewhere that doesn't allow pets. So you are not the first person to ask this question, Gabe. Uh, and it's something I think about all the time. I am an optimist. I see the world through rose colored glasses. And I want to believe that people that have gotten dogs during the pandemic are going to keep them no matter what, because I can tell you something about me. They could throw me out of my apartment if they told me 
I couldn't have d dogs here. If that were to happen, I would find another place to live. But I certainly, you know, Nugget, Nugget is a part of our family. I have a two-legged child and then I have my four-legged fur baby. Now everyone say hello to Pee-wee. Come on. You know you like this. Yeah, you your face, don't you? Oh, oh. He's so cute. He's so cute. Now, you have written a book. Would you like to tell us anything about the book? Thank you, Gabe. Here, thank you so much. Here is my book. It's called She's the Last Model Standing. So I had all of these really cool things happen to me in, in my life from the time, um, from the, God, from the time I was born, really. And I decided to write a, a book about it. They, they call that a memo, memoir. And um, a lot of my book, though, is about what happened from the time I was 20 years old on, because that's when all the really cool stuff in my life happened. And ironically enough, my book starts out in Nigeria, where I was when I was 20 years old. I had gone there uh, to study about traditional African cultures. And I ended up specifically studying about a god named Shango. And Shango is a, a very powerful god in the African culture. And the particular people I was studying, they were called the Yoruba people. And Shango is the god of thunder. Very powerful. And I got very interested. Very interesting. In so I decided to stay in Nigeria, learn more about him. I went to lots of very traditional festivals. I went to a lot of things, Gabe, that can't be scientifically explained ever really but you know what i saw a lot of saw real a lot of cool stuff amazing now i have one last question for you you may not be able to answer this because you seem to enjoy every single thing you do but what is your favorite thing that you have done or are doing Oh, that is, that is a question. question. That's a very tough question you just asked me, Gabe, because, um, yeah, and, and you're right. I enjoy so many things, but of all the things I do, I like being able to help people. I really do, to, to a fault, where sometimes I have to say, you know what? You're doing it a, a little too much because not everybody will appreciate it, but it really but makes it really me feel good. Some of the things I'm involved with, I'm very involved with an LGBTQ center where I go on the weekends and I produce events. And what I do is I bring people together there. I love, that's my favorite thing, Gabe, bringing people together and um, helping the animals you know, once again, being able to use my talents as film or as a speaker so that I can make a difference so that I can get people to donate to things and do fundraisers. So for me, my very, very favorite thing is being able to make a difference in the world. Thank you so much. That is all for today. And if there was technical difficulties, I think that deserves a subscription and a like. Me too. Me too. <laughs>